everybody, welcome back to Sequentia. We are overlooking our beautiful factory district, pumping beautiful smoke into the beautiful atmosphere. But there's a problem. We got problems. Nothing. It, it looks perfect. I know. But all is not well in the world of Sequentia. We've got some serious problems, and today I hope to manage us out of those problems. We do have a lack of employment, a lack of labor. People just don't want to work anymore in the in the factories, you know? They don't want to work there. They don't have the, the chops to do it, and they're, and they're scared. They're scared. The people are scared. So what we need to do is educate them and probably also get more of them as our residential demand is popping off. But today we're going to grow the city in ways never before seen on this channel. We also have traffic problems. Oh, nope, a collision of sorts. They've jumped the curb. Yeah, they're okay. You can't park there, mate. That's all I can say about that. So the master plan today, the city of Sequentia is about to go across the river. We're going to need to build a university and a college, not in that order. We're going to build them the college first, then the university. And also, we're going to need to give them highway access, as this is a North American city. And we're also going to need uh, to unlock some tiles. So let's see, I've got 15 tiles to play with and a ton of money. So much money. How many is this? A lot. Enough? Purchase. We've expanded. This is great. So we're going to cross the river and make some decisions. Something I've not highlighted that is not possible in City Skylines 1 is the fact that you can build a building without a road. So we have to unlock the college. Let's let's do that first. We're a boom town. Uh, we're going to go... I don't want to make any promises. We're going to go till I'm done. That's all I can say for sure. Uh, but we have to go to the education tab here. We do have 13 available unlocks. So we must get the college and use the college to learn its forbidden secrets. And also, to plan for the future, we're going to get the university as well. Very cool. It's on a bit of a slope. I'm not really... I'm not going to sweat the slopes. I'm just going to live with it. Uh, it almost looks like this road is pointing to it, now that, I, now that I see what I've done. But what I want to highlight here is the fact that the roads, the alleyway... Let's, let's do a little road. The alleyway here will actually snap to the building and not vice versa. So you can place a building, put it down, put in the road system. Uh, I don't know if I want to surround this with roads yet or what. At the very least, we're going to need an, an entrance. So let's say... There we go. It's pointed right at the front. That looks good to me. Now let's cross the river, because this doesn't have any services and whatnot. So I'm just going to take a moment and... Let's make a nice bridge. Let's make a bridge happen. Very cool. That was not painful at all. Pretty easy. The, I, I will say the uh, the system for lowering the road to ground level is much, much better in City Skylines 2 than City Skylines 1, so I'm very excited for that. Uh, these parking lots have their own connectivity concerns and issues, right? So you can see the cars there. So we do have to extend this road across the front of the building. What repercussions will this have moving forward? I do not know. The elevation thing kind of sorted itself out, so no worries. But yeah, we've got parking. We've got, um, hopefully, services catch up in a second. And you'll see that gives us college availability. But our education, uh, our elementary education is lame and weak and terrible. And we've got an entire suburban development over here that does not have a school. So I think it's it would be prudent to educate them, probably. Uh, we'll do this side, actually, because I think we can expand this building at some point. I think we can add a park to the side of it. There we go. Excellent, excellent. So now we've got good elementary education coverage and capacity. We can increase that by upgrading that building. But the university is still leaving something to be desired. Maybe the university is near the college. Maybe the college is the old building and then the university is an expansion of that. Possibly. Or is it behind this one as an expansion of the campus or some such, some such thing? Let's do this. Perhaps in the future there will be a, a way to auto-align things that are supposed to be aligned. But until then, I'm going to do that. Cool. Let's get some parking lot access for the for the new 
University. We're just going to soften this. This does not work the same way it did in City Skylines 1, so I'm going to use the Level Terrain tool, which does, and we can kind of make a bit of a mesa here. And then we'll soften that. We'll use that as fodder for softening. I've never been super uh, comfortable with the terrain in either game because it's so committal. It's so darn committal, but... Uh, I, I would probably beg for an undo button in the future, I think, when it comes to certain things. Not everything, just terrain and such. Well, that looks fairly well done to me. I like the parks that are built in, much like the kind of the high school, how it has this, this built-in park. That's great. I want to see variety in these buildings, too. I'm hoping we have regional uh, versions of these buildings. I'm hoping for some cool stuff like that. Uh, there's probably also expansion buildings that will... I'll have to delete roads to build certain things, like this plaza. Ooh, what does that do? Well, that's okay. I'll, I'll expand that later, but for now, that is a highly functional solution. A ton of medium density demand as well, so a lot of this commercial is probably going to get knocked down in favor. You'll, you'll see these not enough customers, so perhaps... Perhaps we need a, a medium density apartment building somewhere around here. So let's get rid of this commercial block or this commercial lot and we'll make one big old apartment building there. Yeah, that's a better use of space. That'll soak up that demand. I'm also hoping that the education system will help bring in more educated folk that are okay living maybe in higher density buildings. I'm not really sure how the whole thing works. I'm, I'm just, I just work here. But yeah, I'm, I'm hoping that... Uh, I'm hoping that it changes the distribution a bit, because low density demand seems to go off in this game, so you wind up with a big sprawling city, which is cool and nice, but you wind up with a big sprawling city, once again. With all that out of the way, let's actually focus on the interchange situation. So we're going to have an arterial running up the way, and of course that's going to connect into this arterial network here, and support whatever develops, develops across the river here. But anyway, let's do this. Big old road, four lane divided road. Maybe this is an overpass. Let's experiment. I've really not experimented as much as I should have up till this point when it comes to uh, when it comes to, to roads and such. Now I want it to be able to go over the road easily. 7.5 meters seems to be a good amount. I don't know if that's the top or the bottom. Let's assume it just goes right through the middle and we'll, we'll start there. For now, let's do the diamond. Let's, I, I'm a big believer, I'm a big proponent in least amount of force necessary. And to me, a diamond interchange is the, is the optimal service interchange to just, to just get it going. Just get, get your city connected, get stuff happening. Boy, that looks good. So that is 144 meters. I'm just gonna do that on all sides. Ooh, and I'm gonna fix that later. We'll fix it in post. We'll do it live. Yeah, sure. About like that. Uh, perfect is good's natural enemy. But why not both? Why not both? How long did I say this was? 140? Another thing that I'd really like to see, I wanna see measurements even if I've already placed a road because I have to go back and build this next to it to see it, 144. So we'll go down to ground. Now, if you're just learning interchanges and just starting your journey building infrastructure, a diamond is a great place to start. This is a diamond interchange. It's about, about as simple as it gets, almost, but it's about as simple as it gets for, uh, for most, most service interchange needs. Service interchange meaning, of course, to get on and off of the highway. Fantastic. I love the use, usage of land here. The, the height, the elevation of the existing land to get us there. Really nice stuff. Uh, let's build in a couple more, couple more ramps here to polish it off. Well, 
I think that is somewhat realistic, if I do say so myself. Now I get to decide what what way is the is the right way. Hmm. So what I want to do here is actually favor the left lane because I think we're going to have a ton of left turning traffic. So I'm going to assume that the left lane is the real lane, and then if they want to turn right, they can merge over to the right lane. I'm, I'm cool with that. Uh, similarly, same thing over here, but the opposite. I think the right lane is the regular lane because most of the traffic is going to be going this way as far as I can, as far as I can tell. Uh, and maybe these entire thing. Ah, hmm. Yeah. We'll just do that. Keep it on the inside there. That looks fairly clean, fairly realistic, pretty decent to me. But one more thing. Merges. Merge. And splits. These segments are too long, so I'm actually going to cut them down by making a break in the road there. That is beautiful. I linked it to the outer lane and it knew what I wanted. And I'm going to do the same thing over here because that is, that is just too good. And the markings adjust automatically. Bonus points if they decide to throw in chevrons at any point. That would actually be really crazy and really next level. But speaking of next level, this, this all came together pretty painlessly. And it's safe to say I'm not really that used to the traffic system if we're being the the road building system if we're being honest so more experimentation in the future variation on a theme the original interchange was quite a bit smaller uh, i've opted for probably a more realistic ramp scale and merge lane scale and all that but all in all i'm calling that a, a big success let's uh, let's connect it and we'll probably get some traffic running through it in a little bit but it's got to connect to the actual road network so let's incentivize Something I'm pretty excited for in this game is is experimenting with just turning off all snapping and just absolutely running amok in terms of just building freeform things. As far as layouts go, I, I really look forward to, to just freeforming entire areas. Similar to the first game, but I, I think there's a bit more flexibility here. God, that looks good. I love that. I love the, the, the thing. I love the thing. The other game didn't do walls very well under the road. And now we get these great walls underneath, and I'm, I'm very happy with that. You probably saw it on the interchange as well, as wall. Also, the, the steepness, the grade of the road is visible while you're building it, which is very good. Anything below 5% is pretty cool. Anything higher than that is a little little wild. Just as a general rule that I just made up right now, officially. Officially made up by Yumble TM. Awesome. Now what secrets does downtown hold? Uh, the extension of downtown. Let's continue our downtown area and let's get wild. Let's get wild and also crazy. And crazy wild. I annoy myself a little bit. I'm sorry. So freeform road tool. Uh, it's not called the freeform road tool. It's called the continuous road tool. Continuous. Unlimited roads. Unlimited potential. Let's imagine this college road is a bit older and pre-gridded time. This road was to connect this part of the downtown to, to the college and the university, both. Now, each of these roads, or some of these roads will be bridged. So I'm thinking these two are, are a bit looking like they have priority because they do continue on towards the high school and upper suburbia and whatnot. So let's let's get a couple more bridges in. Now we can actually see the 
opposing riverfront starting to take shape with arterial and collector roads. Haven't established a, a local network yet, but that's fine. We'll, we'll do that in a moment. Oh, it's raining. Lovely. So I'm actually going to remove this farm. This farm has, has run out of context. Really, there should be farms like everywhere outside town, uh, but I'm just, I'm just not there yet. But for now, this waterfront just needs to be cleaned up a bit. What I will say is that I like, I do like that I've made decisions regarding the shapes of roads because of the farm that was previously there. And I think that's true to reality. So I'm going to choose to leave, to leave this funny shape for a bit at least. And I'm also going to modify this. Let's move this. Uh, this is our power plant or excuse me, a transformer station. Let's move that, oh, I don't know, somewhere somewhere else. Uh, let's just make some small moves here. Let's take, a, take this alley and we'll send it. Send it. Beautiful. And maybe we continue along the waterfront. I took the liberty of following the, the river the whole way down because that is the right thing to do here, I believe. And we'll continue that motif on the opposing side, I suppose. So maybe something like that. Uh, something like that. We'll just go till we get to the end here. I might actually go under the highway with this. And then we'll have another connection to our industrial area as that expands and changes with time. Yeah, let's do it. Let's go under the road here. And then up the way. Now, where exactly does this go or where does it end? I'm not sure, but it is staged and ready to go in the future. Cool. Let's actually establish a bit of a local road network within this, this downtown area. So maybe our continued downtown has a smaller grid on this side of the river. So let's look at this. And we'll use a lot of small roads, smaller, older bits of road. And let's not be afraid to really, oh, I don't know, to really make smaller blocks, essentially. So we'll have smaller zoning squares, smaller blocks. And let's do a bit of grid, but a smaller size so we can really get a diversity of, of building type. A lot... Uh, or a few of you at least commented that the mixed-use buildings look huge. And I had to respond and say, yeah, it depends on the size of your zoning squares, because there are smaller footprint buildings that take up smaller space and aren't as tall. So my goal is to make a maybe a shorter area uh, of, of mixed-use buildings more so, and really try to force that to happen using design as my guide. And maybe there's one more... One more vertical connection, or uh, two actually, small blocks. Let's do tiny blocks for this area. Tiny is a relative term, of course, but let's actually measure how how large these blocks are. Oh, sure, and maybe these correspond with the ones across the river. Maybe there's a pedestrian bridge in it eventually. Maybe that's what happens. Very good. So these blocks are approximately... 128, 128 meters by 81 meters. 128 by 81. So that seems good. I don't really deal in meters, so I'm just going to say that seems good. Compared to what I had before, or over here, we have 128 by 135. So a much smaller, hopefully more walkable area. And since we have so much crazy demand, I'm actually going to throw in a small amount of low-rent housing. Let's do something like this. That's low-rent, and this will be low-rent. But then this can be mixed-use. So the mixed-use the mixed use buildings will be complemented by the high density of these buildings. And hopefully we can start getting some... Uh, some customers here, because this symbol means not enough customers. What that's really probably implying I should do is convert this into medium density. So I'm just going to do medium density row houses along the way here. That's good. Because the low density commercial is not serving us in that position. 
They're not getting enough customers. Even the main buildings can't get enough customers to be sustained. So let's get some more dense housing in here with time. Uh, I'll probably... Uh, let's just continue doing the road network. Let's just keep figuring out uh, this, this smaller block system. looks good to me, but we still have a lot of low density demand, a lot of medium density housing demand. Yeah, this area was polluted for a little while. The ground pollution has dissipated sufficiently. So I th I'm thinking we do uh, low density here. Low density houses. Let's just cut to the chase. Another concern that I'm thinking will probably be important is parks in these areas because I've really not provided too many parks in our suburban areas. You might remember from the previous episode I pointed out this nice small park. Oh, also the school has a bit of a built-in park. Hmm, it's not gonna fit here. That's okay. Uh, I could even move the school actually. Let's just move the whole school. Rather than destroying any of those beautiful houses, we're going to do that, and then we'll put the playground right next to the building here. And that will provide a little, a little something for the surrounding area. Let's see. Well-being. Yep, increases their well-being. And along with that, let's invest in a few parks. Uh, maybe there's one across the street behind the medical facility. Sure. There's one there. Maybe there is a small playground or a few small playgrounds tucked away in these less served little areas here. So maybe on the corner, down on the corner once again. Just enough to improve the property value a bit and uh, increase the well-being for these underserved communities. <laughs> We still have medium density demand and also a bit of office demand peeking in. So let's establish a few mid-rise neighborhoods down on the waterfront here. All of these white buildings that you can see in this view are commercial. And I imagine I've probably overbuilt commercial. It is conflicting how the commercial demand is so high. And yet these places are complaining of low customers. So I, I'm thinking I can probably fix both issues by zoning in medium density over top of some of the commercial. So there will be more customers to go around with fewer commercial buildings and, and more population moving in to satisfy that, that demand. Um, it's also a bit of a recipe for mixed use, isn't it? So let's do, uh, let's do some mixed use across the river once again. Oh, iron press building. There it is. That's a signature building. Good job. Cool. And we can see this is coming in pretty nicely. Yeah, relatively uh, smaller buildings compared to the other side. More small buildings coming in here. Very exciting. I think this side is going to look more like what I imagined. And this side, with the larger blocks, I might even subdivide further into, into smaller blocks. Like maybe we'll run a road up the way here and stop before the arterial. But yeah, suburban road without the center line, without so many markings. Pretty common in North America that the that neighborhoods are, municipalities are not using a bunch of money to mark the neighborhood roads. Uh, you don't really have crosswalks, but instead people cross at stop signs and things. Like you just, you just know, you know in your heart that this is not a good spot to uh, assume people aren't crossing if you're a driver. You can feel it that you're supposed to stop in places like this, where people live. You should slow down, you should stop, etc. And a road to reflect that in-game would be super duper neat. Well, we're having an influx of taxis. Another collision over here at this light, classic. Classic industrial area. 
maybe I will put a different entrance here and maybe that'll help alleviate. Or maybe we'll connect this down here. Let's uh, let's see what that might look like. Let's run a road down here and connect it. I'm just I'm just making it up, everybody. I'm just making it up as I go along. And once again, I think that is where this game excels, is just make it up as you go along. Don't, don't sweat it. Just roll with the punches. Because you know that it's inevitable. Things are going to happen. I'm thinking this arterial is a great spot for low density houses. And I'll explain my rationale. Because what else am I going to put there? So if I put commercial on this road, then the trucks will stop traffic in order to get in and out to make deliveries. But if I go residential, that issue does not happen. The people might not love the noise that the road generates. Let's see if that's actually substantial enough to even register. No, not really. It's a fairly quiet street after it hits this arterial or this second little connection to downtown. Fairly quiet, unlike the highway. You can see how, how noisy this yellow and orange, this highway and industrial area is. That is all fine, but I'm thinking maybe this is an old road. You probably have uh, places like this near where you live, perhaps, but an older road that runs along and it has houses with driveways connecting to it because uh, their eminent domain superpowers were strong enough to widen the road, but not strong enough to buy the people out or to destroy their houses outright. Um, so maybe that's what's going on here. I imagine density will increase here. Uh, it might even become low rent housing eventually, something like that. But for now, I think a good use of this is just low density housing. These are older houses that have maybe been here for longer. I'm fine with that as a, as a bit of backstory. Another comment that I received very frequently is that the radio mast, uh, the telecom radio mast, is uh, associated with height. And I don't really know why everyone stated that so confidently. That doesn't appear to be how it works, at least currently. Anywhere that's non-populous seems to, it's the same whether you're on a hill. Uh, that does not change the radius of that green circle. See if I can illustrate it. Yeah, so the so the green circle, uh, it may change if there's something in the way, but in a field, regardless of the height, the altitude, it it doesn't really seem to matter. It's just it's just a big green blob. It is only when you come within range of of buildings that it matters. And I don't think that's the height of the buildings. I feel like it's more the the bandwidth is being soaked up. So really. I think we should be looking at this more of a bandwidth being soaked up type thing, uh, as it doesn't appear to, to correlate with the height of the mast itself. So winter has truly arrived and there's snow on the ground and I can't see a darn thing when I'm building. So I'm just gonna kind of putter for a while and like let the game run and uh, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do my best, but I'll be honest, in the way things are currently, I cannot see what I'm doing come wintertime. We have reached Big Town. I skipped a bunch of milestones because they happened in inconvenient times. Whatever, that's life. I'm doing my best. Big Town, this is crucial. Congratulations, the city is coming along. Thank you, game. That's really nice to hear. Thank you. Good. Uh, we unlocked a bunch of stuff, but really the most important thing is high density housing, North American style, large apartment buildings. So now we get to look around and say, hey, where, where do I want these big buildings to go? Obviously downtown, and there's also no demand just yet. So I'm gonna keep puttering around and kind of filling things out a little bit. You can see up here, I filled out suburbia. That was when I mentioned I couldn't see what I was doing. That's what I was doing. I mean, I can see, just to clarify, I can't see the zoning squares, which is kind of a, a bad feel. Okay. I can see them when they're colored in, but like, I can't see them here. Like it's very, it's very hard to see. Maybe I can turn off the, yeah, no, it's, it's a mess. But anyway, 
I really hope some there are certain things that get get updated on the final release or even after the release. I hope that they continue updating things as as well as they did in City Skylines One. But until then, the snow is a, a little bit of an obstacle for me. Uh, we are having a lot of mid-rise demand, medium density demand. So maybe we replace. Well, what's this? This is like a high density. Yep, that's a high density building. Let's replace that with apartment buildings. So like medium density. Yeah, small apartment buildings. Let's do that. And this is the new high density zoning. I'm going to wait until we have some demand for that. But these are essentially uh, the closest thing to a skyscraper that we've unlocked thus far. Stay tuned for that. The snow is receding, the snow's going away, and I could not be happier. Goodbye, snow. See you next year. I'm glad it's going to take a whole year for that to come back, because really, visually, I don't mean to be a negative Nancy, but like that's th this looks much better to me. This, this green and everything, much, much more visible. I just found that there's a setting where you can change the way the interface looks. So now my interface is black and orange, and I think that is super duper. There were a few options in there. I don't know how much I can show off, and I don't know how much is going to change between now and then. But yeah, really happy with that. Uh, I'm just going to finish laying out this college area. I'm thinking we need some student apartments and maybe some offices as well. So let's let's rock and roll. I found that a good way to tell how your city is doing as you play is to look for this icon. That's the abandoned icon. So I'm going to zoom in right over here. Okay, cool. We're going to zoom right in. It's abandoned. It's been abandoned by its occupants. We can figure out why by clicking on it, hovering on, on unhappy. And at the top there, it says small homes, negative 16. That's okay. This is this is low rent, high density housing. So the, the homes are inherently small. That's that's life. But additionally, there's poor education, lack of entertainment, and unreliable health care. So I just want to go down that list. Ultimately, I'm going to delete this building, but the unhappy marker here is a good indicator of, you know, hovering it tells you why they left. So let's let's fix it. Uh, let's look into education. I think education should be largely pretty good. Plenty of edu uh, pr plenty of elementary school going on. Oh wow, there's one right next to the. Okay, maybe, perhaps. Oh, that's a college. I take it back. I put a college over here. I forgot. Uh, there's an elementary school here, and there's one over here, and I don't think either of them are actually full. Yeah, two ninety six. This one is full, interestingly enough. But I don't suppose there's much I can do because there's an empty school right over here unless they really want one right next to it. But that seems like an awful lot of extra elementary schools. We're already at 6,000 capacity with only 1,000 people attending. So I'm not actually going to do that. So let's skip education. It's probably not education. High school's fine. College is fine. This side probably deserves a high school at some point. That's a pretty safe bet. So maybe we'll get a high school going on over here. Let's do that now. Cool. We'll start with that. I might adjust it, but okay. Moving on. The next thing was healthcare, entertainment and healthcare. So entertainment, entertainment. Yeah, fair enough. I missed that whole area when it comes to entertainment. So let's put one right across the street just to avoid the same thing happening again when that building grows back in. And healthcare. Yeah, there's a little gap in the healthcare coverage. So now actually let's change gears and let's do the hospital instead. There's a hospital that we can unlock. Excellent. And because this dense area is 
becoming denser with time. I'm thinking the hospital is not a bad move. We're also, we have a lot of money and we're gaining money as time goes by. So let's, let's do this. We'll put a hospital right across the way and it'll cover this entire side plus over there. So we'll have an abundance of coverage in just a moment here. Let's see. I'll just finagle it right there. Oh, and we have a great town. No kidding. What does that unlock for us while we're looking? High density business. So commercial areas, North American style supermarkets, malls, hotels, big movie theaters, concert halls, theaters, fitness centers, department stores. Okay. Well, I think that'll I think that'll solve the healthcare issue if that was a main concern for them. Certainly the whole city is covered now, plus all those little extra ones. I might even delete some of the smaller healthcare facilities now that we have this one. Plus it's able to be upgraded in ways. We can upgrade the Oh goodness, helicopters. Specialized treatment ward for extra health. And specialized equipment and facilities to increase the chances that they recover. Well, that's all well and good. I've just been going around spamming high density commercial to see what sticks. I'm kind of in the experimentation phase. Sometimes I'll speak and it sounds like I know what I'm doing and other times it's like, yeah, I gotta, I just gotta run around and try stuff and see what happens. So I've been spamming com uh, high density commercial to try to fulfill this commercial demand, which is just impossibly high right now. But anyway, it's yielded our first semblance of a skyline, or at least the next level of a skyline. I would say layer one is, is pretty complete using mixed use and, and uh, apartments and other high density commercial. But this building in particular is a level two high density commercial. And you can see that's the first really tall building in the city, I'd say. So that's pretty cool. Just a spoiler alert, there's a few other tall buildings. The high, the high density housing, I have not seen a shred of high density residential demand, so forgive me for that. As soon as it shows up, I'll pick a good waterfront spot and we'll build a, a tall building and see what happens. But yeah, just wanted to share that with you. All right, it's here, we did it. We did it, we've got high density residential demand, finally, holy cow. What I've really been doing is, is rezoning our low rent housing as mixed use housing, just progressively. That seems like a natural kind of progression of things. But instead of low rent housing, now we have high density housing. So let's do it. These are the skyscrapers or, or one example of a skyscraper. My logic here is that this area shows not enough customers for all this mixed use. So I'm thinking we go in and we zone like one really good square of stuff. How about right on the corner over top of all of this? So it's overlooking the, the riverfront, as I said earlier. And we'll make it somewhat large, like a, like a four, a four by six ought to do it. And I bet that that builds immediately. Yep, beautiful. Oh, are you not into cranes? Wow, now we're talking. There it is, five, 580 Sunnyside Street, 132 households, 148 people. It's a lot of, lot of individuals, but that's okay. I feel like the high density zoning is less for families and it's actually more for individuals. And that is totally fine. There's also a little smidge of high density demand. So we even get to get a little across the river probably. Let's see. At this point, I'm going to zone these very carefully because they are kind of like plopping a skyscraper, or really exactly like plopping a skyscraper. That's truly what we're doing here. So let's start maybe over here in this position. We'll get maybe a couple a couple buildings to match the one across the street. Yeah, there we go. 36 households. 36 households. Yep, that's fine. They are not actually skyscrapers, but that's okay. We can get more people in this area and start start getting enough customers for these mixed-use buildings. I think that the two will work together very, very well. Uh, meanwhile, just to check in on our interchanges, holding up very, very nicely. People have no trouble getting in and out of the city by highway. 
it's quite car centric at this point, but uh, my plan is, is really ideally to overload the city with cars and then shoehorn in transit after, as is popular in modern US cities. Things just turned orange. It must be spring. <laughs> it's springtime. Things are orange. That's how it goes. But yeah, that's the goal is to really move a lot of people into this more dense area, this, this dense city core, which will sprawl out from there. And mechanically, it seems to work just like that. As long as my computer can handle it, <laughs> I think we'll be able to continue expanding no problem. Everybody, thank you so much for hanging out. Really appreciate it. Feel free to give the video a like. Feel free to subscribe here. Feel free to join the Discord. Whatever makes you happy. Again, I'm Yumble. I appreciate you being here. I'll see you in the next stream or the next video. <laughs>